Hi, I'm here today with Bridget and Kirk Nielsen, and I've been here for, my wife and I have actually been here for the last four days, and we came here for your healthy, what, what's the name of the event? Live Happy and Healthy. Live Happy and Healthy. <laughs> Adventure. And that's a way of saying high vibration. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had gotten, in com you'd communicated with me about a year ago, uh -huh. and one of the things that I asked of you was if you could uh, do an article on high vibratory diets, yes. and you did, and yes. it's been very popular. Awesome. And uh, you also have a YouTube video out. I do. Talking on the same subject. Yeah. And now you're putting on, uh, on these events yes. where you're teaching people how to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and it's, it's powerful. Uh, most people don't really understand the correlation of diet and their spiritual growth. Right. The journey. Yes. Can you, do you have any ideas on the importance? So yes, um, a high vibrational diet is so key because the idea is, is in this like spiritual journey, like ascension, waking up, being kinder. We want to clear our vessels so that our higher selves can really come in and embody um, that true frequency and if we're all de we're all toxic we've got parasites dictating our thoughts and making us irritated and agitated at each other we actually can't be kind on a physical level which then impacts our emotional states our mental states so it's really key to in introduce the foods that help raise our consciousness very good yes yeah. um, now is it possible to have a high vibrational diet while still eating meat, in your opinion? I think that there is a transition. And I think that um, depending on your circumstance, depending on where you're living, meat might still be applicable for you. And there's other things you can transition, maybe even before the meat, like going organic, doing cleanses, introducing more fruits and vegetables and living foods, like while you're still eating meat. So I think that you can do that. I feel like when people are in environments like in big cities or just super like working construction jobs and just being like the ultimate slave, they might need a little bit of like uh, energy, like say life force from an animal, like from something else to keep them going. So I understand that there's people in certain positions that may need that. So there's there's ways of really doing it nice, nicer and kinder to ourselves that's going to actually have a higher vibrational impact on ourselves, but also for the planet, because the biggest pollutant on the planet is cattle. And we were all talking about that this morning and everyone knew it. And that might come as a shock, but it's like, wow, there's more cattle on earth than people. Yeah. And that's a huge deal. So it's just kind of like looking at not only like what's happening in your own body, what's happening in your energy by intaking animals, but also what's happening to our world, because if we truly, you know, care, we're going to need to swing the pendulum in the other direction just to balance out the planet itself. Yeah, and, and someone in this group made a observation that yeah. I thought was very interesting. Yeah. The way we're treating animals, you know, eat, you know, raising them in these horrible conditions and then slaughtering them and then consuming them, a lot of us you know, don't really see a problem with that because they, we see them as a lower species. Right. Well, guess what some of these negative ETs see us as? And could it be... That's an interesting could point. Could it be some sort of a karmic kind of relationship? Yeah. Right. How can we expect the ETs to treat... You know, we're sovereign humans. How could you... Yeah. How, how dare you, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, we're doing the same thing to not only animals, but the planet that we're supposed to be guardians of. Yes. So... You know, a lot of people, they're at different places in their spiritual journey. Yeah. And, you know, some people, they get on a paleo diet, and that's what they want to stick with. Right. But, you know, for me, I can't, I, after the experiences I've had, I can't eat anything that used to have a face. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, it's, it's going to, you know, how, how do you change your mindset? Right. You know, from, you know, um, how do you deprogram yourself from thinking that way? It's a great question. I mean, I think it's a loaded question. Then. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think starting at looking at the reality of, of this of the situations that these animals are raised in is the first way to really be honest with what's happening and honest with the frequency that you're intaking by ingesting them. So really looking at it, you know, it's like instead of just looking at the steak that you pick up at the grocery store and you're like, great, thanks. It's like, no, watch the cow be like killed, slaughtered, injected with like all these crazy hormones, like take that in like 
get into an empathetic state again. That's one of the things that has created the mind control is yeah. to make us insensitive. And it's like, we really need to get back that sensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be really helpful in helping us transition and not wanting to eat as much meat. And I think part of it is detoxification. And another thing is the myth about protein. There's tons of ways to get protein without meat. Vegetarianism, I mean, look at all of India. I mean, there's civilizations that have been vegetarians. Vegan, it's a new experiment, but it's quite easy to go vegetarian. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. One thing I, I wanted to say too about that is, is that um, as we move through uh, third density where we're at into a fourth density type, uh, and that's what your first question was, is higher vibration. Yeah. Because that, that's the way you worded the question. Right. Um, as you move into that, then you would stop affecting the planet in a negative way by you know, killing the animals and eating it. You, you would move on from that because it's a higher vibration to go to a plant-based and then maybe even to just living on sun or like a breatharian. Right. That's where the ETs are. They, they've moved on to that. So as you as you do ascend, you would change what you eat. So there wouldn't be anything wrong with uh, the eating the meat if that's where you want to stay is down in a lower density. Right. Point. That's yeah. a good point. Uh, so if you're happy where you're at. Yeah. Keep eating. Yeah. 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 That's, <laughs> but that's where you'll remain. And but as you do as you do ascend and as you raise your vibration, you will want lighter food. And then you even go to maybe just juices. And then maybe you'll just go with like laying in the sun or getting the sun. So, and a lot of uh, other beings from other places do just that. Yes, they do. Um, well, this uh, event that you've put on has, has been very powerful. Mm -hmm. And my, my wife, Stacy, told y'all this morning that it's been life-changing for her. There are probably people out there that are wondering, how can I um, have the same experience. Are you going to have these types of things in the future or are you going to do videos on this kind of stuff in the future? Yes, um, we'll be having, we'll continue to be having these kinds of events. We'll have the food oriented events where you can learn how to actually make these high vibrational foods. Um, at all of our adventures in the sacred sites around the planet, um, we do have the high vibrational food so that you can start to eat it and uh, feel it. But as far as learning, We'll be putting together an online course in the spring so that you can at least do it virtually. And if you can come in person, that'd be great too to come in person. Cool. Well, that has been one of the things that with all of the adventures that we do is to, you know, the food, like she says. Yeah. And, it, and it's been one of the most challenging things because when we go to other places, when we don't have our home base with all of our gadgets to make the food and go get the exact food, it's, it's tough to do. But we do it because we feel it's so important. Yeah. And everybody that comes to the adventure, they think they're coming to swim with the dolphins or, you know, climb to the top of a volcano or something. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they, they go, wow, um, I felt so different eating that food. I'm going to change my way that I eat just from just being there for that, that short time, just for a week. And so it has had a huge impact. And this has just been one of our commitments that whatever we do, we're always going to, you know, share that, that message. Yeah. And I, I found when I go to these high vibratory areas, yeah. I instinctively start eating better yeah yeah you know i don't want you know any of that uh food that has been weaponized you know it's true it is no it has yeah. literally been weaponized it's to, true to keep us docile and to they want us to die and die quickly right <laughs> right yeah after, after we've produced for them you know bridget and i when we first got here uh we, we had to go down to um some other cities uh and we would go down into the city and it would be uh kind of the rat race city vibe. And we'd start getting this vibe, this feeling like we wanted to eat meat. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And y'all have been vegetarian. Yeah, since, yeah, no, yeah. for a long since time. Since you were old? Uh, it, since I was like two. Wow. Yeah, it was like, it was like a, there was a psychic field mm -hmm. that like you get in it and all of a sudden you start getting bombarded with this thing. And we drive by, you know, like a, a hamper place with, Kind of smells good. Yeah. We would never consider that. Yeah. It was almost like some kind of like, a I mind want, control. I want like thing. real chocolate milk. Yeah. Like I want like some kind of like meat or something. Yeah. It's like I don't even know what that is. Uh, like yeah. yeah, I just yeah. it wasn't even part of it. And then we would go into that field, and then that would become part of it. So it's really weird. Yeah, because you've been a vegetarian since you cut your teeth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And um, and it's interesting too because a lot of spiritual events. Um, I've been to certain other people's retreats, and they don't focus on the food at all. And for me, it it I, well, I start bringing my own food. Right. I'm just like, okay, I've got to do this because. It's an integrated part of the spiritual experience. Like even people coming here to Sedona, maybe not to our events, 
It's like we have a few great vegan places you can eat in town and if you stick to that diet, if you stick to the holistic dedication of that spiritual experience, you're just going to accelerate that much more quickly. You're going to have that dream rather than right. not have that dream, you know? So I, I just think that it's so important to look at all of it. Excellent. Well, I hope this has inspired you to move over to a high vibratory diet and to see why it's important. Because when I deliver the information about you need to be more, uh, more loving, uh, for, you know, focus on forgiveness of yourself and others, raising your vibration, become more, becoming more service to others. People don't understand why the little caveat at the end is eat high vibrational foods to yes. help raise your vibration. So I think now people should be able to correlate why it's so important. Yeah. And hopefully it's inspired people to start the transition. And it's it is a transition. It's, yes. a, it's a major life change. Yes. And, and it will change easy. the planet, too. It will. It will. One person at a time. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, actually not eating the meat will actually change the planet and the actual environment, too, because right. of the, the trees will have to stop, start, can stop be cutting down. The CO2 levels will go down by just changing your diet. Yeah. Well, I personally would love to see you do some high vibratory cooking shows. <laughs> okay. Maybe we, can get, that, maybe that we so, can get that on TV or something. Okay. It may be. Yeah. <laughs> and those of you watching the uh, this blog have, have seen um, this group putting, putting on their different demonstrations and they know this information, they're passionate about this information, they've researched it, they've, they've gone through all of the little, um, they've ironed out all the problems that you will go through when you try to right. try to start this type of diet. Right. So I, I think it's great that you're bringing this information. It's extremely important, more important than most people realize. Yeah. Can, can you give us your uh, website information? Yeah, so um, a lot of the information, this blog that he's talking about is on my website, which is BridgetNielsen.com. Is that my spot? Yeah. Okay. Bridget, B-R-I-D-G-E-T, Nielsen, N-I-E-L-S-E-N.com is where that uh, that is. And then on YouTube, YouTube YouTube.com slash the Bridget Nielsen is where that video is about the high vibrational diet. And then HarmoniousEarth.org is where all of our adventures are that we go on. So you can check those out to, to come play with us. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Go off gluten. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was just like, oh, we talked about the meat, but I'm like, hey, transition to uh, gluten free. I won't yes. go into the details, but just try it. Give it a try. Right. My yeah. uh, Stacy, my wife had to do so. Turned out she had been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Yeah. Had been suffering for years. Wow. And if you live with someone that has ulcerative colitis, you're not the everyone suffers yeah. <laughs> it's, it's horrible mm -hmm. and she started breaking out on her chest yeah. and she did research and she found out that it sounded like a gluten allergy yeah. and she cut out gluten from her diet ulcerative colitis disappeared all the symptoms disappeared wow. so there are a lot of ailments symptoms that you have that you may not you know relate to food immediately you may think environment, yeah. but you need to evaluate how your diet is affecting your health. And because, emotional states. And emotional yeah. states. Yeah. yeah, mental states, emotional states. And and think of it this way. It's like right now we are kind of programmed just to kind of be we wake up, be exhausted, chug the coffee, like, uh, like whittle the work. Yeah. And it's like that's not who we are. We're meant to live hundreds of years. We're meant to beam. We're meant to just completely live our gift, create, express, like that's really where humans are meant to be at. So think of like kind of the beacon to shoot for as ultimate vitality and like ultimate health, ultimate love and all the things that that incorporates. So just set that as your intention and then the information and things you need to do will just really come to you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't think of a better way to end it. Yeah. 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 And uh, please, if you see below, there's there'll be a link to her sites and uh, subscribe to her YouTube channel. She's got a lot of wonderful videos that I think you'll enjoy and are very informative. So I appreciate both of y'all for Thank having you. us out here. Uh, that you had invited me out before, and everything happened to prevent me from coming here. Yeah. And I, I wish I had been able to come here before now. Yeah. This has been 
uh, a beautiful experience for Stacy and I. And awesome. I, I hope that others out there are able to have a similar experience with you all in the future. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Corey. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.